You want to know? You want to know a crazy fact? This is something that, that that people who hate capitalism, and not that I love capitalism, it's just the best we have. You want to know what what people will always tell you about the one percent? Here's something they won't tell you. Here's what here's what they don't tell you, okay? Because because it it, it would fuck up the narrative. Do you know that ninety percent of all millionaires got no money through inheritance 90 percent of all millionaires are self-made i'm not saying that they did it ethically i'm not saying that they were good people to get there i'm saying that this belief that the only way you could be a millionaire or be successful is if you get a head start is so many people start out as millionaires and go broke and it's called marriage but starting out is a great head start. But 90% of all millionaires made their millions. Like I said, not always ethically and not always nice, but they made it. And of those people that made it, many of them failed several times. But I guarantee you, one common denominator on the way to getting there was they made themselves uncomfortable. They took a chance. They took a risk, right? And I don't mean gambling on options. I mean... I'm tired of working for somebody else. I'm tired of doing this. I want to do something myself. Or I'm going to stop spending money on stupid shit and start investing it and growing that wealth. There are people out there that make $200,000 per year right now and are flat broke. If they lost their job tomorrow, they're homeless. There are people out there right now making $70,000 a year who could probably retire. They're rich. They're wealthy. Obviously, I'm giving extreme cases on both sides, but it goes to let you know. There are people in this community that when COVID happened, they were working the same software development job. Both were making about $70,000 a year three years ago. This is a true story. This guy is still working at the same place, got his 3 to 5% raise, and now he's making $77,000 per year five years later or four years later. This guy, and I won't say his username, took the hiring frenzy opportunity and jumped ship to 90000 A year later, he kept applying, jump ship, 120,000. Last year, jump ship to 160,000. One of those people made themselves uncomfortable and took chances. This person didn't apply or passively applied, got an offer, didn't take it because they were afraid. We always focus on what could go wrong. That's anxiety winning. We never tell ourselves, well, what if we're right? What's the worst case scenario if we're wrong? What if we leave this $70,000 job to go to this 90,000 and we get hit with layoffs? Now I'm out of a job. Should have stayed here. Really? If you get laid off here, you can still apply and go to another place. Plus, you're already making more, which you can now use a negotiating tactic for your next job. And you've got experience with a new company, depending on how long you were there. What is scarier than the unknown? What is scarier than leaving and going to a place to make more money or doing somewhere you're happier but could lose your job? The only thing to me that's scarier than not knowing your future is looking at what you're doing now, not being happy with it, and realizing that you're going to do it every day for the rest of your life. That is scary. If you think this is anxiety and scary, knowing that this is your future should be a lot scarier than not knowing what it is. But Stocky, I got family to think about. Okay, you think your family just needs money? Sure, you can be a little bit more secure now, but you also come home miserable, unhappy. The time you spend with them is not good. It wasn't worth it. And you die or young because you, you stress levels in your aneurysm or something. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be motivational Friday here. Just you guys got to make yourselves uncomfortable. It's it's hard. It it's not that's easier said than done. No, I did it, and I'm somebody who's self-made. I I I wasn't inherited. I didn't not I didn't not only did I not inherit money, I inherited trauma and debt and police and shit like that. Like I I I I I was I started out negative. You know what I mean? Like, I, I self-made. I, I, was, I, I went back to starting from scratch at 30 years old working at a Burger King. Like, I self-made. You know what I mean? Like, but I had to make myself uncomfortable along the way. You married into wealth? My wife's broke as shit. What are you talking about? She's hot, though? True. True. She also bought Doge at 41 cents, so, you know. Didn't your wife have servants growing up? Sir, servants in India cost the equivalent of $50 a month here. You'd have servants, too. It's just that they're not real people. According to them, and not them, not my wife, but like in some Indian cases, like a caste system. I can't find a source on the millionaire thing. Uh, here you go. Uh, Business News Daily. Uh, 
Fidelity Investments found that 88% of all millionaires are self-made, meaning they did not inherit their wealth. Uh, the Fidelity study showed that when considering their financial future, 30% of millionaires uh, surveyed said they were concerned with preserving their wealth, while 20% said they were focused on growing their fortune. Again, rich is not wealthy. Having money is rich. Having things is rich. But when your money is making money, that's when you're wealthy. A lot of people out there are rich. A lot less people are wealthy. If you're making a lot of money, but you're spending all your money, then you're not wealthy. But if you're making money and that money is then making more money, then you're wealthy. Check this out. My money made $10 on plug today. I'm wealthy. Okay, that's not what I meant, but okay. I thought you were gonna say being wealthy is having good families and friends. No, we're talking about money. You're talking about happiness and content. I could make way more money if I streamed more hours and if I hoard myself out virtually, like ask for subs and money and, Welcome, and, and, and took every sponsor that came through. Gang. But I get to spend time with my family, especially my daughter. And I don't have to, I don't have to feel like I'm hiding something or feel like I'm having to, uh, uh, you know, um, um, you know, be shady or, or feel like my, my ethics or morals are, are, are being, um, uh, you know, compromised and it makes me happy. Right. So there's a certain level of income and wealth where you can can say that's Welcome enough and I'll focus the rest on game. happiness. And that's an important thing. Some people say it's seventy five thousand dollars with with inflation now, like eighty or ninety thousand dollars. That's where it's at. And I agree and disagree because above that, as long as you've got enough money to where your bills are paid and you're putting money away for retirement, everything else becomes negligible, right? Your overall life happiness doesn't change much if you get to take a, 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 an extra vacation that year, right? Another 10 day vacation. Sure, it's nice, everything like that, but it's money that you, know, you spend and it doesn't really, you know, like it, it doesn't really drive your overall lifelong happiness, right? The, 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 the barrier for the stress and anxiety and what the detriment to your mental health is, being able to afford your bills and, 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 and put away for retirement and savings versus not being able to do that is night and day. That's where it's at. Now, I'm not telling you guys to just get to get to a certain level and then quit. No, but but there comes a point of sacrificing your 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 time, your happiness and your well-being for more money at a certain point where that extra money doesn't bring enough to justify what you're giving up in return. And that's where I'm at. Obviously, I'm above that 75,000, but I'm at a point where I could easily make double my income. But I don't want to because I'm much happier um, where I'm at now because I get to make enough to where I'm comfortably living, but I also get to spend time with my family. I also get to not kill myself uh, and uh, like, like, you know, uh, metaphorically speaking. And also uh, I don't have to feel scummy. Do you have sponsors? Sometimes. Um, I, uh, hi Stocky, I changed three jobs in four years. I'm still applying. I got rejected be recently because they said I hop around too much. Well, fuck them. Don't spend the rest of your life hopping jobs. Find one that you like, but if, if you find another opportunity, you know, and they take it, good. That's the thing. You lost out on one opportunity because they don't like how much you've jopped around, but you've moved up four opportunities because of jumping around. So even if you, you even if you don't get to jump another job for another one or two years, you're already four advances ahead in the time that most people take 10 years to do. So you're already winning. What's the biggest, what? What's the biggest difference in your spending now that you're wealthy? I, I wouldn't call myself wealthy, but you want to know, okay, let me tell you the truth. Because I grew up so poor, and because I was an addict, I told you guys, there is no better budgeter in the world than an addict, okay? All right, the, the best budgeters in the world are addicts because we will save every dime on every non-essential thing to make sure we have enough money to get our fix. As a recovering addict, that allows me to be a better investor, okay? So, here's the one thing though, all right? Yo, that's so true, of course it is. You think, I, dude, I, listen, I speak three languages, English, broken Spanish, and facts, okay? Let me tell you something. So become an addict? No, don't, unless you want to lose weight too. Wait, never mind. <laughs> hold on, let me just stop there. So, <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm, 